Have you ever found yourself separating God the Father from God the Son? Like as if they're two completely different people and they do not mesh. Or maybe you see like God the Father being someone who's just waiting to discipline and waiting to bring judgment down. And God the Son is the one who is just longing for mercy. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how we have had wrong perspectives about the Father and in actuality, how it has caused chasms between us and Him. We're also going to talk about how we can know the Father and how we can know Him through the life of Jesus. I'm Ashley, and join me in this episode of Sip and Sew with Ashley for part two in The Journey into the Father's Love. just want to share about my personal journey and just the realization of how there's some things I've actually really had backwards. I grew up in the church and my parents were in ministry and all that kind of good stuff. But from age 16 to 21, I actually just walked away from God completely and just did my life my way until I decided, okay, this is not what I really want. I really do need God and please save me. (laughs) And so I'm very, very grateful for that. However, there are some things that I realized that I actually have to unlearn because I felt like there's this innate, like subconscious mindset that I had of just like, I'm not praying enough, or I'm not, I'm not reading my Bible enough, or I'm not fasting enough. Or I would just have, I would just have this, these, these thoughts of like, I'm just not doing enough. And I feel like I've just, I feel like God is just completely unreachable. And then I would just anticipate the feeling of God's going to correct me, or I deserve to be corrected, or I deserve to be disciplined, you know, all of those thoughts. And I just didn't know how to come out of that. First, let's talk about the wrong perspectives we have had towards the father. Some of us might feel like we're anticipating his correction. Like he is someone who is literally just standing behind our shoulders and waiting for us to mess up, waiting to tell us what we need to do better, how can we do it better, and so forth. Some of us might be feeling like he's a distant father, like he's absent, like where is he? And I don't hear him and I don't feel him and I don't even know him kind of deal. Maybe some of us are more in the boat of never feeling good enough. I actually kind of tend to relate more to that one. Just feeling like I can't do enough. I can't do it well enough. um, I can't do enough to be close to him. Just feeling like there's just always lack in what I can be doing to be close. And lastly, maybe some of us can't really relate at all. Maybe we can't relate because maybe some of us didn't have a father to even know what that feels like, to even know what that looks like. How does, you know, what does that even mean? I would say all of those perspectives are pretty relatable to everybody on this planet. And I'm sure there's a lot more that I'm not even mentioning. So I just want to share about my personal journey and just the realization of how there's some things I've actually really had backwards. It actually wasn't until kind of recently where, again, I've been on this journey about, you know, going into the Father's love and who is the father and 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 just really understanding who I am, you know, who I am to the father and how much he loves me and how he sees me. And so part of that journey was also coming to the scripture verse and it's in John 14 verses 8 through 10 and it says Philip said, "Lord, show us the father and we will be satisfied." Jesus replied, "Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am?" Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show to show him to you? And guys, I have read this verse multiple times, okay? And this just shows you like how reading the Bible and 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 growing in knowledge and theology and all of that. I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm just saying if you don't have the Holy Spirit to breathe on it and breathe revelation, then it's just words on a paper. Because like I said, I can't tell you how many times I read this verse 
and I'm reading it and it was like a veil came off my eyes and I was like, oh my gosh, like I have subconsciously, you know, looked at God the Son as a separate person than God the Father. And yes, it is Jesus, but they are also one. So, and then this verse saying, when you see Jesus, you see the Father. And one of the first stories I thought about was the woman who was about to be stoned because she committed adultery. Before I go into that, I'm going to read John 5 verse 19. And it says, So Jesus explained, I tell you the truth. The son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing. Whatever the father does, the son also does. Okay. So here we go. When I read about what Jesus does or had, you know, what he did on earth, it is actually the Father doing it through him. Like it was, like I said, it wasn't any new information that I hadn't heard before, but it was like the Holy Spirit breathed this revelation into my heart. Reading that verse, I started thinking about like, oh my gosh. So these pivotal moments that happened in Jesus's life. And I was like, wow, 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 wow. Okay, let's take a pause. Let's slow it down. And let's like not read it as if I've read it before. So I'm thinking about this story and I think about, okay, here you have this woman who is caught in adultery, caught in the most, probably one of the most embarrassing points of her life, taken into public and basically literally ready to be stoned to death. And you have her, and then you have these people who are ready to take her life because the law said so. And then you have Jesus. And so before, when I've read that story, it would be like, okay, Jesus, like, you know, God, the father, he, he, he put this law into place of like, when people commit, you know, commit adultery, you know, in the Old Testament, whatever, that they needed to be stoned. Like this was the law that God put in place. Right. And that's all I was seeing. And then I was seeing like, okay, and Jesus is here to stand in the middle and in the gap because he's the merciful one, if that makes sense. And, but then with this new, like with this lens over my eyes of like the Holy Spirit making things clear, it was like, actually, it was God the Father who was extending his hand of mercy to this woman. It was God the Father who is extending his hand and saying, I forgive you and just don't go and sin anymore. And I was like, oh my gosh, like that is the heart of the Father. Jesus, yes, he was doing the actions and, and ministering to this woman, but it was but he was also showing the heart of the father, which is full of love, which was full of love towards this woman. And this is a moment in history. This isn't a story that's just been told over and over and it's not real. This really did happen. And that shows or that showed the heart of the father to this woman who was, I mean, literally about to die and be stoned. Real quick, I want to show you the apron that I finally finished. It's the first apron that I've made that only covers half of your body and it's super cute. I absolutely love the pockets. I love the patterns. So excited and I can't wait to do more. So the next story I thought about whenever I truly thought how Jesus embodied the perfect image of the Father was about the man who was possessed with legion and he was, you know, living in caves. And I was thinking, wow, so here you have this man who is a complete outcast and he is damned to be lost forever and like separate from society, probably for the rest of his life. I mean, he's doomed. He has no hope. There's just nothing going good for him, right? And then you have Jesus, which mind you, I mean, we don't know for sure if the man was considered a Gentile or not, but it wasn't, he, he would, he, I think he was either a Gentile or he was like part Jewish and part something else or part Greek. Anyways, I'm not sure. However, it wasn't culturally acceptable for someone who's Jewish to come to this guy who is 
considered completely unclean and just you got no business being around him kind of thing. And here is Jesus who comes to this man and he obviously, you know, for those of you who have read this story, but for those of you who haven't, he comes to this man and he basically just delivers him, heals him and sets him free. And so kind of backing up a bit, you know, again, reading the story of like not seeing Jesus and the father together, but just seeing Jesus doing it. I'm like, oh yeah, Jesus, man, he's so kind and so merciful. And he just is wanting to show love to this man. But seeing it from a place of like, actually, like, again, Jesus embodies the perfect image of the father. So it was actually the father who was going to this man and showing him mercy and kindness and unconditional love. And it was through Jesus. And this again was just blowing my mind. Like here I've been, you know, struggling to feel close to God, to feel close to the Father, to feel like, you know, I'm he's just out to kind of kind of get me in a sense. And I'm completely missing the whole character of God the Father whenever I read about Jesus. And so again, like I was just honestly being blown away thinking back at these you know, pinnacle stories in the Bible of where Jesus ministered to people. And I'm like, wow, this is showing who God the Father is. The heart of the Father, his compassion, his kindness, his his willingness, his willingness to go out of his way and be um, super selfless. The last example I want to give in looking at the Bible and seeing how Jesus embodied the Father perfectly just blew my mind. It is Jesus dying on the cross. Guys, I was wrecked, okay? So here I am and I got these new glasses of understanding how, not under, not just understanding, but having a revelation of how Jesus embodied the perfect image of the father when he walked on this earth. And I put those glasses on and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm reading the story of how Jesus died on the cross with these new found glasses <laughs> that the Holy Spirit provided. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like this really does show how, the, how much the father loves me and his heart for me and for you. God the Father was super, super, super involved in that moment when Jesus was on the cross. It was not the Son standing between us and the Father. It was not the Son saving us from this Father who was just ready to bring down wrath, right? It was actually God the Father displaying His unconditional, passionate love for us through His Son, while being on the cross. I want to read this quick verse to you. It's 2 Corinthians 5, 19, and it says, For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them, and he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. I want to highlight the word in, for God was in Christ. Now, when I read this verse, and actually... I'll be honest, my husband was the one who pointed me to this verse. And I was like, because I was explaining to him, like, how do I explain like just what is bursting in my heart? I don't, I don't know how to put it into words. And he was like, do you know that there's actually a verse for that? And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that. And so he pointed me to this verse and he was the one that pointed me to the word in. And he said that it actually means it's the same word that is used Um, whenever someone is explaining a child being in a mother's womb. The word in is the same word that is used for a child being in his mother, his or her mother's womb. And I was like, oh my goodness. So that is literally what it's saying, that God the Father was in Christ as he was on the cross. And it just amplified what the Holy Spirit was just basically shouting at me of God, the father loves you and he is, and he is passionate about you. And, and he wants to be close to you. Like he endured the cross as well, in a sense, because it was through his son. 
So after sharing all of this and what has really been on my heart and something that I've been really stirred about, you might be asking, how do I connect with the Father? Where do I even start? And I just want to go back to the verse where in 1 Corinthians in chapter 2, it talks about how, you know, who knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man? Same goes for God the Father. Who knows God the Father except for his spirit? So the first thing I would say is ask the Holy Spirit to lead you into the Father's love. Just just praying and asking him, Holy Spirit, lead me to know who the Father is and ask it with faith and he will show you. Another tool that I think could be very helpful in connecting with the Father and actually something that I'm honestly quite new to is contemplative prayer. And essentially it's similar to meditative prayer and it's just basically thinking on scripture. But essentially, uh, for example, maybe you take a story in the Bible like, you know, how Jesus died on the cross or whatever miracle, maybe it's the woman with the issue of blood, but you're taking that story or those passages and you're reading them and you're reading them very slow and you're just um, allowing it to really sink into your heart and then take a moment to just be quiet and picturing yourself in that story and just asking the Holy Spirit to lead you into what is Jesus thinking and feeling about this person? And how does it reflect who God the Father is? And how does it affect my life too? So just basically kind of being in a place of just silence and meditating on the Father and Jesus in the scriptures. You may have experienced, you know, difficulty connecting with God the Father. And like I said, it could be for various reasons. Maybe you didn't have one, or maybe your earthly father was abusive, or maybe he was physically present, but he just was emotionally absent. Well, I want to say there's absolute hope for you. You know, that is why God sent the Holy Spirit. You know, a lot of us probably would would have wanted and maybe preferred for Jesus to like stay instead of go back to heaven, right? But actually, it was all the better because his Holy Spirit, you know, got to come and live inside of us. And he is the one that leads us into truth and shows us who the Father is. And it's meant for you and I to know who the Father is. I believe that, you know, God the Father feels pain when we don't know him because of wrong perspectives. I don't, I don't think he's angry when we're not close and, you know, ready to discipline us by fire necessarily, but... I do believe it pains his heart because he desires for his children to know him. You know, and uh, you know, again as a father there there is love and there's there's grace and kindness and of course there's discipline, of course there's correction, but his heart is based and rooted in love. If you have found this video helpful or encouraging or you might know somebody who it would encourage and help, please feel free to share it. Subscribe to our channel for more encouraging and edifying content and until next time. See ya. <laughs>